Last weekend, a football match between Carlton Athletic and Ilkley Town was disrupted by an unusual pitch invader, Oscar the Alpaca. Oscar had escaped from a nearby farm and came to join in the action, halting the game for 15 minutes. Oscar had clearly decided that it was his time for a great escape. Oscar had found his freedom, but all too soon a farmer managed to shepherd him home. The whole scenario reminded me a little bit of lockdown restrictions. With ever-evolving science, rapid infection rates and instantaneous news, we find ourselves in a very confusing cycle of freedom. Comedian Matt Lucas has shared a video of himself parodying the Prime Minister's speech on easing lockdown. It goes a little bit like this. So we're saying, don't go to work, go to work. Don't take public transport, go to work, don't go to work. Stay indoors. If you can work from home, go to work. Don't go to work. Go outside, don't go outside. And then we will or won't something or other. Now, don't get me wrong. I would make a far worse attempt at leading our country through this pandemic than Boris ever will. And we certainly need to be praying for our government at this time. But the way things are playing out, we never quite know from day to day whether our dash for freedom will soon see us locked up. We have lived with this for six months. For the Apostle Paul, whose conversion story we looked at a few weeks ago, the cycle of physical freedom and extreme lockdown carried on much longer. During his ministry, he spent approximately five years under arrest, about half of which was spent in a prison cell and the rest under house arrest. And it's only by the grace of God and some ingenious escape plans that Paul managed to freely make out of many other precarious situations. If we turn to Acts chapter 9 verses 23 to 25, we read of Paul's first escape plan. Following his conversion, Saul spent time in Damascus preaching in the synagogues that Jesus is the Son of God. Soon there was a conspiracy amongst the Jews to murder Saul and they kept a round-the-clock watch on the city gates in order to kill him. But his followers took him by night and lowered him in a basket through an opening in the wall. This basket, or spurus, is the same type of basket as was used at the feeding of the 4,000. So perhaps more like a picnic hamper. What an image. But when Paul speaks of this escape from the Damascenes in 2 Corinthians 11, he speaks of his adventure perhaps as a matter of embarrassment, as it is the story which follows his assertion that if I must boast, I will boast of the things that show my weakness. This is the first of Paul's many great escapes. As we reflect on freedom, we do so recognising that today is the annual day of prayer for victims of human trafficking. Included in this week's edition of Wibsey Worship at Home, is the story of Fredek, a Hungarian man in his 30s who made his own great escape from slavery by jumping out of a window in the house in which he was being held captive. But the escape from physical slavery is just the start of a journey to absolute freedom. For Paul, it wasn't long after his physical escape that he got caught up in more chains, perhaps of a less obvious, but just as oppressive form. Acts 9 verse 26 reads, When Saul arrived in Jerusalem, he tried to meet with the believers, but they were all afraid of him. They did not believe he had truly become a believer. 
Paul had been transformed from a murderous persecutor to a mighty preacher, but his past kept him captive. What he had been held him back from what he could be. At times, our world, our community and even our family and friends do hold our past against us. Sometimes, yes, for the protection of each other and society as a whole, but sometimes because we do not believe that transformation can truly happen. I reflect in a 21st century Western culture and wonder whether I would immediately trust a notorious persecutor of Christ's followers to preach to or to pastor those in our church. But just as people help Paul escape through the city walls, one particular person helped Paul escape his past, and that was Barnabas, whose name means son of encouragement. Scripture tells us Barnabas took him under his wing. He introduced him to the apostles and stood up for him, told them how Saul had seen and spoken to the master on the Damascus road and how in Damascus itself he had laid his life on the line with his bold preaching in Jesus' name. After that, he was accepted as one of them. Now, in this circumstance, Paul wouldn't have been able to escape his past through his own word. He needed Barnabas alongside him to speak on his behalf. For many people today, trapped in physical, mental, emotional or spiritual slavery, they need someone to speak on their behalf. Will you respond to Jesus's call to proclaim freedom to prisoners and be that voice? I've spoken of this before, but they're just too good an example to ignore when speaking on freedom, and that is escape rooms. Having recently completed my first one since lockdown, I have now spent 38 hours intentionally being locked in a room in order to solve puzzles to make a great escape. You search high and low, under furniture, through books, in pictures and on the walls to put together clues in order to work out how you can be free. We do that in life sometimes. We search for clues to help us escape our unfulfilled reality. We may think that when we get that job or that partner or that pay rise or that car, we will be free from the things that weigh us down. But our human soul will never be free because of possessions or job fulfillment or even loving relationships. We will only be free when we know the truth. In John 8 verses 31 to 32, in the voice paraphrase, Jesus says, If you hear my voice and abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. You will know the truth and that truth will give you freedom. To know the truth is to know who Christ really is and who we really are. When we discover for ourselves that Christ is more than, than an historical figure, good moral teacher or baby in a manger, we discover that we have a redeemer and a saviour. We discover that we have a friend who is more understanding, more giving and more loyal than even our greatest friend on earth. When we discover that Christ is the son of God and that all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to him. We can live in the truth that we are not powerless and held captive by the world. When we discover the truth of who Christ is, we are set free for we come to know that sin and death and destruction have been destroyed 
by his death and resurrection. When we discover the truth of Christ, we also discover the truth of us. The chains which hold many of us enslaved today are wrapped around us because we seek our identity in the world, not in Christ. We were created in God's image, and yet we so easily allow the world to make us in its image. We have two choices when it comes to realising our identity. We can live authentically as the person we were created to be with all the potential and beauty that that brings with it. Or we can live unauthentically as the world would like us to be. We can live the truth or we can live the lie. Which do you think brings freedom? I would humbly suggest that there are times when all of us do not live the truth of who we are because we are chained by the fear of not being good enough or wise enough or beautiful enough or normal enough. But God has and does and will offer us a great escape from all of this because he offers us Jesus. We weren't designed to live up to the world standards of what is enough. We were created by love and redeemed through love to make us more than enough in God's kingdom. Do you need to make a great escape? A great escape from being chained up by guilt from the past Peer pressure in the present and anxiety for the future? Then simply open your heart and open your mind to the voice of God who made you in his image and calls you his child. This freedom isn't some elusive, nice idea. It can be ours, for as scripture says, if the sun sets you free, you will be free indeed. Who knows when we will be free like Oscar the alpaca to run free on a sports pitch? Who knows when we will be free to preach to the crowd of the love of Jesus like Paul did? Who knows when all victims of modern day slavery will be free like Fredek? But one thing I do know is that even as we live a lockdown life, we can live freely. Because we can know a saviour who has the key to unlock all the heartache of life which longs to hold us captive. Chris Tomlin has written a beautiful arrangement of John Newton's incredible song of testimony, Amazing Grace. Chris's additional words say this. My chains are gone. I've been set free. My God, my saviour, has ransomed me. And like a flood, his mercy reigns. Unending love, amazing grace. I pray that you will know that your chains are gone and you have been set free by the one who loves you more than you could ever know. God bless you. <laughs>